Okay, just an update as we um, just topped up the food because I'm changing my feeding regime now. Um, next couple of weeks, so getting ready. There's what I'm feeding right now. I'll let you figure it out. All sake, Ikari, in that way. So I'm just going to do a bit of a water test at the moment. And I'm trying to juggle stuff with my hands and open up meters and all sorts. So anyhow, there you go. I'm going to take a sample of water, pop it in the TDS meter, <clears throat> switch the TDS meter on. It's a bit windy but I've got the wind caps on. Let's hope that makes a difference. So it's just calibrating, that's why the clock measurement is here. These are very good uh, meters. And anyhow, so we got these running. So the TDS right now is um, well it, it will say that 127. Um, if you look at the time there, the sorry, the temperature slowly climbing, so you want to give it a few minutes while the temperature calibrates. To the machine so we get the right set in there but that will roughly be what you know 125 127 i'm guessing the temperature should land if you're watching this observantly the temperature should land around 22.4 so we've had andy with us finch last week friday today is the tuesday after i think it's the 28th or the 29th something like that so i'm just doing a quick uh, catch-up video and uh, the recycle arrow has been going in uh, fish have just been feeding a uh, very little bit. On Friday, I'm going to go collect my Okawa. Me and my son, Brandon, are going to go collect the Okawa. Um, you should be seeing another video out on Wednesday, and that's the video for the Rasta Koi um, event that's being held at the Koi Collection. So you should be able to see that as well. That video is coming out. you got lots of videos to watch for free. For free. We know your koi keepers like free things, so that's what I'm feeding right now. Not a, not a lot of food. I'm not a believer in feeding a lot of food yet. It's too early. That's the pH at the moment, and uh, that's what I'm getting from the top membrane. If you're an arrow person, you know what I'm saying. Uh, that's from the uh, bottom membrane, and that's the waste itself. That's the arrow machine. Um, some people are asking what pump I use. Air pump. That's the one there, it's a high blow. And I got this from SKS, SKS Supplies, high blow. This is their new low energy one. So you can get that yourself. The arrow sounds loud, I don't know why. I think this machine is good at picking up sound around as well, but it's actually, if you hear, it's not that loud. So <clears throat> if you look at the temperature on the pH controller, it's saying 22.3. So that should be more lined up with that. This is wrong, this has not been calibrated I always use a calibrated glass thermometer there and you can pick them up for 60 70 pound a calibrated one comes with a certificate so anyhow that's the arrow running at the moment this is the dosen tank that has um, a concentrate of bicarb in there that comes from the the pH controller in the corner there which is just showed you the temperature would trigger this via solenoid valve open up and let a slurry of bicarb in and when it, it needs it into the pond. So you can see me what I was putting away in the waste. This is to compensate the waste. So this is tap water at the moment. And that's what I'm using in tap water, but only when the arrow is running. So that's being used uh, once every three hours. And um, so at the moment, once every three hours, that's all I'm using in that way. So I'm hoping, yeah, it should. The water bill should drop considerably. And this is the arrow going in, sorry. That's the arrow going in there. And that's the waste. That's the one point, sorry, not the waste. That's the 1.1 liter of source water going in there as well. So that's all running uh, neatly there. That's the source water. And once the, um, once the arrows stop running, then no source water goes into the pond. And like I said, the, the arrow only runs once in every three three hours as it is so and then once I get it where I need it to be the probably the arrow I'm gonna drop it down to once every four hours so um, that's how I'm gonna run the pond I'm gonna run it tight so I have a 
um, a pH controller. I don't believe in running RO and running it half-heartedly at a 7.5 or 7.6. I, I personally, this is me, um, rather run it properly um, rather than just sort of run it um, sort of like nervously in that way. So um, that's the that's the system itself. I'm just switching off this machine. Ah, oh, there you go. Oh, I forgot to put the temperature on. Well, the temperature was up to 22.2. So if I left it a little bit longer, it would have probably matched the pH controller. So this is all the fish that I've got. And as you can see, I don't believe in overstocking your pond. A lot of guys have fish, uh, fish related problems partially. And, and these are some of the things the moderators of Rastakoi and myself and we've all been talking. A lot of guys are having problems with parasites. And a, a lot of the common factor um, is that the ponds are always overstocked um, in there. And uh, so my my stocking level, as you can see, is uh, the, the fish has probably about, each fish has about six, 700 gallons of water to itself. Um, and I, like I said, I got one fish to collect, uh, my Okawa from Bristol that has been in quarantine. And that's coming out. Uh, on Friday, it's finished quarantine this week, so I'm picking up Friday, and the fish is going uh, going straight in. So that's just a small sample of what's going on, and the feed is there. That's what I'm feeding. It's a mixture of sinking and different types of floating food. Um, I don't really start feeding color food until November, October, November. Once I cool the pond down, I've been saying this to somebody recently. Um, the fish absorb more of the color food. Uh, when their when their um, metabolism is slowed down a little bit. So, in talking to Mike Snaden, my teacher, he recommends only feeding color food around the 18 Celsius mark, and um, sort of mixing it with um, a lighter winter type food, um, whatever you can at your choice. So, that's really all for that. Um, the system that Andy said in last week. Oh, so it's been three weeks now. Let me sit down. I'm sitting in Andy's chair. So the system that I've, uh, that this is the RO system that Andy said, and a lot of the Americans have been asking about this. I've been running about three weeks now, going into his fourth week. And so far, it's all been brilliant. There's not been any issues. And um, one of the things that Andy will do for me, uh, or anybody, uh, once your membrane needs blocking, you buy a new, uh, once your membrane is blocked up, needs changing, you buy a new membrane, I'll buy one off of him because he's cheaper and not only that, he, he will bring it to me um, and he'll post it out or what have you. But he will take this old membrane and clean it. I think it's, I can't remember what he said, 60, 70 pounds to change it, to clean it, sorry. And it'll be good as new. So he has his own system of, of cleaning them. If you need to find out that, ask Andy. Don't ask me because I have no idea what he does in that way. So that's how the pun is running. I'm running just around... Um, 22 and a half Celsius um, that's good for Sansai and uh, Yonsai as I said the, the when I watch these videos it's always I could hear the arrow uh, but yet when you're in the back here with the door open you can hardly even hear it so it must be that the microphone has a good way of picking it up so just to finish off this video on that that's where they're sort of uh, the, the things that I'm running on there um, you might have picked up I do test it GH, but I use more my palin test to m check um, any um, issues. The, the palin test is, as, again, that was sent out about a month ago, six weeks ago, to be calibrated and serviced by the palin test company up north. And I came back with a certificate and uh, it's all been calibrated and right. So I know for a fact that that works good. I've ordered new reagents for there as well. That's coming this week. And um, so one of the things is I don't just use a machine because it's a good machine. I use a machine once it comes with a certificate of calibration in that way. So that's all for now. I hope you enjoy picking up on the, um, uh, the new video that will be out on Wednesday. I'm just, this is that video will highlight the Rasta event. And if you come into the Rasta event, just remember, if you're planning on coming to the Rasta event, um, please make sure you sign up on Facebook. Uh, look, one of the plecos out there. Anyway, sign up on Facebook um, and uh, make sure you log on. Answer the three questions. If you don't answer the three questions, you will not get in. No one will let you in. So you got to answer the three questions. 
and then uh, once you do that then uh, sign in on facebook put your name down and then uh, one of the guys will confirm uh, that you are attending and whichever day you attend an event uh, please let them know it will be a saturday sunday event as well so that's all from me and um my oh, i'm getting distracted by my you got a very expensive koi but then you see uh placo and you get excited by placo there you go you can probably see them in the wall that one's massive um anyhow yeah so make sure when you sign up on there and the guys would let you know what's cooking so we'll have a good day out and um in that way there's my uh takigawa goshki somebody was asking me about it it looks stunning absolutely stunning so anyhow um that's all for now